Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to properly set up your Canva designs for production printing. So as you can see here, I've already started at canva.com. I'm logged into my account here. I'm going to go ahead and click on create a design here up in the upper left hand corner. And now I'm going to start from one of two places. Print products here will show you some prop, uh, popular print templates that you can select. Up here are some various sizes that you can start with. Or if you have a custom size, you can go ahead and come here and you can type in those dimensions. You can change whether you're going to use inches, millimeters, or centimeters. You don't want to obviously use pixels because we're going to be designing for print. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come back in here and select print products. One thing you want to pay close attention to is the size of the actual template that you're going to be using because Canva is great. It has lots of um, great designs. However, there are some designs that are set up in imperial standards and some that are set up in metric standards. For myself, I'm in the United States. I'm going to be using imperial measurements. So a flyer is going to be sized to 8.5 by 11 inches. If you're in Europe, you're going to be using um, an A4 size for a flyer. If I accidentally select a template down below that's set in an A4 and I want to print it on an 8.5 by 11, I'm going to have issues with certain uh, parts of my design not fitting onto that 8.5 by 11 size sheet. One of two things are going to uh, happen. Either the um, design is going to have to be modified by my print service provider and they're either going to stretch the images out, they're going to have certain parts of it that are going to be cut off, or they're going to have to use a larger size uh, sheet to print on, and that's going to be added cost to you. So you want to make sure that if you want an 8.5 by 11 size flyer, you use an 8.5 by 11 size template. So that's what I'm going to do here. And I have a blank template that it will uh, Canva will start you with. I'm going to go ahead and just select a uh, pre-made template over here. I'm not going to design from scratch. But let's just present, uh, pretend I went ahead and I did all my edits here. I changed some of these photos. Maybe I changed some of the text or some of the colors. Um, a little caveat about the colors. Canva is a web-based design portal. So those are going to be hex codes. So the problem is when you're designing for print, you're typically designing in either RGB, CMYK, or Pantone colors. Now obviously you cannot use Pantone colors here on Canva. You're only gonna be using these hex codes and the CMYK or RGB values might be a little bit different. So if you're, you need to maintain branding standards, unfortunately Canva is not necessarily always gonna be the best choice because if you need to have a design that has a logo, for instance, that is going to be using a specific Pantone color, you're not going to be able to set that up in Canva. So there are some, you know, a few downsides to using Canva, especially if you need to do something like that for your design work. But let's just go ahead and say that we have everything set up exactly how we want it. And now we need to make sure that everything is set up properly for print. So my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to file. I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go click on show rulers and guides. This is kind of going to be your last ditch effort to make sure that the sizing of your document here is set up properly for your uh, printed design or printed piece. So if I drag out my margin here, you can see eight and a half by uh, eight point five for my width. And if I click from the top down, that's going to get me to eleven inches for the height. So I know now this is sized properly for a 8.5 by 11 size flyer. Second thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to File, Settings, and I'm going to go to Show Margins. Now by default, Canva puts rather large margins here. These are 0.85 inches. In my opinion, that's kind of overkill. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back to File, go to Settings, and I'm going to go to Add Guides. Now here it gives you some suggestions on like uh, columns. I'm going to go to custom. I don't want any columns. I just want to go ahead and set my margins here. So I'm going to go to 0.25 and 0.25 for my columns and rows. And I'll click add guides. 
So now I need to make sure that all of my design elements are inside of where these margins are set up or I risk some of those elements being cut off during the actual printing process. And what I mean by that is if this book is very, very close to the edge like this, it's not all the way to the edge but it's very, very close. After this is printed, if there's any kind of shifting on the uh, press when it's being printed, or if there's any kind of shifting on the cutter when it's being cut, part of this book will be cut off and you won't have a full image here. It's very important if you have text like this, I wanna make sure that this V right here does not go outside of this area because if there is a shift and this gets cut off, part of your letter here might get cut off. So if you have a design that has a text that goes right to the edge here, you wanna make sure that you go inside of this margin to make sure nothing gets um, cut off during the uh, uh, bindery process. So now that we have that set up, we're gonna to go to File, Settings, and I want to go to Show Print Bleed. And this is gonna be important if you have a design that has um, a background that bleeds off the edge or needs to bleed off the edge of the sheet and if you're unfamiliar with what bleed means 0.125 inches all the way around outside of your design is going to be your bleed in if you're using metrics it's going to be point um, or excuse me three millimeters in size and essentially what that means is your design goes off the edge of the sheet so when you um, go to have this cut you're going to have the uh, design go all the way to the edge and not have white space showing on top or the bottom or the sides. So now that we have our margin set up, we have our bleed set up, everything is, is uh, uh, perfect. Now we can go ahead and download our design. So we're gonna go to share, we're gonna go to download, and we're gonna change our file type from PNG to PDF print. You do not wanna use PDF standard Standard will download images at a lower resolution. You want a nice high res 300 DPI resolution on your photos, so you want to make sure to use PDF print. You always want to make sure to include your crop mark and bleed. If you don't click that, your file will not contain the bleed, and your print service provider will either come back to you and say you need to send us a file that has bleed on it, or they're going to charge you to add bleed, and again, that's additional cost easy enough to just click that checkbox and make sure that that doesn't happen. Now, flattened PDF here is not as important as it used to be. Most modern day rips can handle, you know, uh, transparencies, it can handle various fonts. Your print service provider may come back to you and say, just go ahead and send us a flattened PDF. Typically, what I will do is I'll send them both. I will do one, I'll download this as a regular unflattened PDF, and then I'll come back to this step a second time, check that flattened PDF box and download it and send them both files and say, here's a unflattened and here's a flattened PDF. Basically flattening the PDF just converts it into an image so that there's no issues with fonts or anything like that or transparency problems. Um, again, it's very rare for that to present a problem with most modern day rips, but it can at certain print shops. So go ahead and just cover all bases, send them both uh, file types. Under the co uh, color profile, ideally you should be selecting CMYK. CMYK is a print standard for um, most offset and digital printing. There are certain situations, obviously, like I mentioned earlier in the video, we're gonna be printing with Pantone colors. Obviously, Canva can't do Pantone colors, so it doesn't really matter, but you should be sending in a CMYK file if you can. RGB has a higher color gamut than CMYK, so some of the things that you see with a RGB file are not necessarily gonna print in the same way. CMYK has more of a muted look in some, some colors, so it's important if you can to use CMYK. The problem is, is that you have to have a paid account for Canva. In my case, I don't have a, a paid account, so I'm just gonna go ahead and download it as an RGB file. So once I do that, you can see it's downloading to my desktop. 
I'm going to go ahead and just open this up in Acrobat. And you can see here my crop marks have been added. If I turn on my ruler, I can see now that this is almost 9 inches wide. So I know for a fact that my, um, my bleed has been added here both on the width and on the height. Here it's a little bit past 11 inches. So we're good to go. I can go ahead and I can forward this now to my print service provider. They should have everything they need to go ahead and print this flyer just like any other job. Back in Canva, like I said, I normally will go back here and download a second copy using the PDF print and I'll go ahead and I'll flatten it and I'll download this as well. And this will be the quote unquote image file instead that you can go ahead and forward along with it. Just make sure to name your file, you know, unflatten and flatten and then send it off, email it or upload it to a site or whatever you're going to do for your print service provider. So that's it. That's how to set up everything properly for print. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them down in the comments section below. Like I mentioned, there are some caveats with using Canva, such as not being able to set Pantone colors or in, if you're using a free account, you have to download everything as an RGB file instead of a CMYK. For the most part, as long as you follow these settings, make sure your margins are set properly, that you have bleed. Most print service providers will be able to print these with no issues. Thanks for watching the video, folks. If you can give a like, uh, share it, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Again, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, folks. Appreciate it, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.